joining our, our webinar this morning on uh, securing the, the cloud. It's actually one of my favorite topics. Actually, it's kind of a pet peeve for me um, in that I know a lot of companies don't, don't spend enough energy and focus on the cloud. Um, and we're going to talk today about why that's not a good idea to not focus a lot or why the contrary, why it is a good idea to really spend a lot of energy in, on it and to invest in it. Um, my name is Tom Ruffalo. I'm the CISA at eSecurity Solutions. Uh, Garrett Chang, Chang will be talking for Fortinet and representing what uh, what they're doing about cloud security, very broadly speaking, which is great because you get to hear about a broad view of, of security. Um, I just have a few startup slides. One of them is just a conceptual slide, and it's you know the whole point of this of this slide is. We've evolved over time since the 80s um, and uh, with the need to secure different areas of our security. And there's always been new areas and new risks and new threats, but the old threats never went away, right? And that's the, that's the case today where you just keep adding on the need to support the old, uh, the old threats and then we have new areas that are evolving. The, the internet itself is basically the root cause of a lot of these threats and cloud specifically, right? We're talking about cloud security. We're talking about not a monolithic thing. We're talking about data centers, applications, home office, partners, customers. I mean, it's, it's anything that is outside of your corporate office, which right now today is almost everything, unfortunately. Um, and if you look at where the data used to be, obviously the data used to be on our servers, um, behind our behind our corporate firewall in our office, probably. Then it went migrated to hosting centers. Now it's like in in public clouds, private clouds, hybrid clouds. We've got 90% of our employees moved to home offices right now. And in general, used to be 90% were in the office. Now we have 90% out. Cloud applications. Over time, we've been moving all of our clouds out of the office and into the cloud. And we're not talking about the cloud. Uh, application itself, we're talking about the data that goes with it. So we have data in the, uh, in the public clouds, we have data in the home office, potentially on PCs, on homes, on, on phones, laptops, and then we've got cloud applications um, and all the data that's in those, all those different servers and all the different clouds. Um, if, if that doesn't resonate as being a significant risk that, uh, risk that needs to be addressed, um, Hopefully, we'll convince you today. Um, if you look at some of the data on 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 threats, uh, we've got about 60% of workloads now are hosted in the cloud. Uh, we've got about 90% of companies that are using the cloud for something. Um, a, CI, a CSA, it's a cloud security organization, survey in Q1 of this year showed that uh, of of the people they they surveyed, which was worldwide, various size companies, cloud security was was the number one priority for 83%. Application security was the, the number one priority for about 43%. That's that's huge. And um, you know, we're not seeing that from every customer that we work with. We don't see them all reacting to this, but we think that it's an important, um, uh, important trend. It's not gonna change as something that's only gonna get worse. Uh, cloud spending obviously is growing faster than IT spending and security is the number one challenge. Um, so if you just kind of make a list of, of, uh, of uh, why security should be uh, more important as it relates to the cloud, number one, everything's moving to the cloud. Every company, every company is at risk. Um, it's, not, it's not the job of cloud vendors, and uh, whether it be public cloud or applications to protect your data. They're all working on it, they all want to do it, especially the cloud application companies. But, but if you look at the, you know, the separation of, of responsibilities um, in, the, in cloud data centers, they don't make even claim the claim that they're gonna protect your data. Um, cloud environment's changing quickly. Um, so we're talking about hybrid clouds, we're talking about clouds that are in multiple locations, multiple vendors, complexity is increasing, um, and the visibility is really poor, which is one of the reasons why using some of these cloud security solutions is important as well. It's just getting the visibility of what is going on um, because, as you know, from a compliance point of view, you cannot be compliant without visibility. 
um, you know, our company, Security Solutions, is all about helping companies and in, um, in business secure their their data. Um, and we we offer managed security, risk assessments, advisory services, and, and we sell security products from great companies like Fortinet. Um, and we help we help companies go through the whole process of of compliance, uh, which at different at each step requires a different activity. Um, from a uh, from a delivery point of view, we have a, a lot of different offerings that we offer to help our customers with the ultimate goal of being compliant or being secure at the level that you are targeted and comfortable with. So with that as a background, uh, I want to switch to uh, Garrett now, and we are going to let him take off and give us his presentation. Hey, Garrett. You should be, there you go. I can see it. Looking good. And I can't hear you, so hopefully you're not talking yet. Sorry about that. Um, there you hear me? Yeah, right. now I can. Um, this is Garrett Chang. I'm um, with Fortinet. I'm an SE here. I've been here just, just over five years. Um, we're just going to, you know, quickly go over how Fortinet can help uh, secure your cloud services and also um, your cloud infrastructure. Um, some of these first slides are similar to what Tom was just talking about. Um, you know, uh, uh, software as a service and infrastructure as a service security is one of the top issues um, for, uh, for cloud services uh, reported by uh, CISOs. Um, and all, most cloud security failures, 99%, um, Will be will be the customer's fault um, through 2023. Um, a lot of the large uh, data breaches that we hear about um, from um, from the public cloud um, is because people are setting up um, sites, ser servers um, up in the cloud, and they're not uh, taking the time to to enable or to set up you know basic security uh, function F features. Um, you know that we would that we would just sort of automatically do um, as a physical server, such as um, I know that one of uh, a lot of the times it's people are using or are throwing stuff in the cloud using the default password, right? And so that's um, something that we want to avoid. Um, and so, as Tom also mentioned, uh, we do need to have visibility and control in our when we're using uh, cloud services uh, for compliance purposes. Right, and so that's where um, some kind of uh, cloud access security broker, CASB uh, product, um, it kind of comes into play, and it helps to give you that that visibility. Um, right, and <clears throat> there's also a lot of uh, you know, e even though in a, um, and this is for specific to um, software as a service, right, we don't necessarily have that visibility or control anymore because. Um, somebody else is responsible for um, the application and sort of storing that data. Um, the liability still does lie with um, with the with the with the user with the with the company that's that's using the those um, services. Was, uh, um, and so that's where you know a Fortinet Forty Casby solution um, can help. We will give you visibility into SaaS applications, um, their usage. Uh, you know, if you have um, a, a Fortinet, a FortiGate in the environment, um, we can help uh, detect, uh, give you visibility into both sanctioned SaaS, SaaS usage as well as unsanctioned SaaS usage. So, you know, if there is shadow IT going on, um, we do have the ability to to alert um, on that. And the data centric security policies out um, and and protect valuable uh, data and assets um, we can do uh, threat protection um, identify uh, risky behavior um, make sure that people are you know aren't logging in from two um, you know a SaaS application from two different locations at the same time and also uh, make sure that the data is is secure uh, and doesn't have anything malicious in it. Um, and then with compliance, 
Um, we can ensure uh, you know, the SaaS usage, usage aligns with the compliance requirements that you have for whatever um, organization um, that you need to, or whatever standards you need to be compliant with. Um, so um, I've sort of focused on our, our SaaS offering, uh, 40 CASB. Um, I'll, I'll go over both uh, 40 CASB and 40 WCP, that's uh, Cloud Workload Protection. Um, we do have two separate products. Uh, so Cloud Workload Protection uh, is, is geared towards um, uh, infrastructure as a service, making sure that uh, you know, Azure, AWS, uh, Google Cloud Platform, um, that, that those um, environments are following with best practices. And so you're not using default passwords on, on servers, you know, um, that, you know, that, 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 that things of that nature. Um, 40 CASB is going to be focused on um, SaaS applications, uh, you know, making sure that, um, you know, the, the people are, are logging in, logging into um, Salesforce, um, you know, the, they're, they're doing what they should be doing and not, um, you know, exfiltrating a lot of data. Um, or, you know, you know, in Dropbox, we're not um, uploading files that have social security numbers or, or you know, PII in it or uploading things that have um, you know, malicious uh, content into um, Google Drive. Um, Um, so, 40 CASB, um, this is sort of a, a typical deployment scenario. Um, the admin sets, uh, sets up the user admin account for 40 CASB, um, and we're going to use APIs uh, to talk directly with um, the different SaaS applications um, so that we can um, get, a lot, uh, get information on, you know, who's logging in, what's been um, and what's been uploaded? Um, you know, scan those, scan those files. Um, you know things of that nature. Um, and then you know, so our remote workers, when they log into Salesforce or Office 365 or M365 or, or Box, whatever it is that they're logging into, um, you know, we we can track that. Um, and then with on-premise users, we can also, um, you know, with the 40 gate, um, you know, track them logging into the sanctioned. Um, SaaS applications, but also keep track of, um, you know, see what they're doing um, with maybe unsanctioned uh, SaaS applications. You know, maybe um, as an organization you're using uh, a Google Drive uh, for, uh, for files, you know, for your file storage, um, and then um, we want to make sure that people aren't going to Dropbox and and you know uploading things to Dropbox. You know, with 40 gig, uh, we can. Um, Track that also. Um, so, uh, 40 CASB. Um, this is what the dashboard looks like. You know, we have app status. We have the activity history, um, the the risk statistics. Um, you know, show who the high risk users are. Um, you know, trigger if it's triggered on policies. Uh, we can keep on trigger things based on policies, based on you know where um, people are connecting from. Um, and also show uh, trends as to what's happening. Um, you know, maybe uh, there's a bunch of files that are being uploaded um, that have, um, you know, PI in it, right? Or um, a lot of users, for whatever reason, are logging in from countries where you know that doesn't seem right. You know, we can, so we can track those trends um, so that we can, uh, you know, add more security. Um, um, you know, we have also of the ability to, uh, we, you know, per application, um, we can drill down into the, into the different applications to see what's, uh, you know, see the files. Um, we can actually, um, you know, see the users uh, that are logging in, um, what they're doing, um, the type of uh, files that are being uploaded. Um, this is where we would, you know, scan for, um, where we could see, you know, oh, there's, you know, there's a bunch of files that are you know, have PII in them or um, you know, this file has something malicious inside of it. You know, so, we, you know, at the per, we could see that at a per application level. Um, and we can set up policies here. 
this is just this screen talks about these screens are just you know different policies that we have set up. Um, we'll do the data analysis to identify sensitive data or risky content. Um, so protection can be based on um, users, uh, login, passwords, location information. Um, you know, upload, download from suspicious suspicious IPs. Um, so there, there's a lot of other um, things that we can look for um, to identify threats as. Uh, you kind of can't see it very well in this picture, but in these in these screenshots. But you know, each one of these um, each one of these policies. Um, and these are all the default policies that are, are listed here for, and this case closest to us, uh, PCI DSS. Um, we also have, uh, you know, how severe those those threats are, uh, and then you know, we can enable and disable them. Um, and we have predefined policies uh, for compliance with SOX, uh, COVID, um, PCI DSS, HIPAA, uh, GDPR, and then uh, NIST 800, and also ISO 27. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, 27,001. Um, and we also, you know, with those policies, you know, those those are useless without having some sort of um, alerting. Uh, so we we can alert alert based on the data analysis, right? Scanning files, um, threat protection, and compliance, um, and that's just all based on. Um, the policy, the triggers, the severity, right, and how you, how much information um, you want um, alerted. Uh, we also do have a visual heat map and that shows activity by um, date and time, um, and user, country, region, where people are logging in from, um, or provisioning events are happening from, um, and also uh, IP addresses and other other triggers uh, that have been configured. And as I kind of talked about earlier, we also have the ability, um, really, with you know, when using conjunction with the FortiGate, um, to do some advanced shadow IT reporting. Um, so we can we can sort of take the logs uh, from a FortiGate or Forty Analyzer, um, you know, put those together with <clears throat> the data that we're getting from Forty Casby, um, and see you know if people are are going to um, Forty. So are, are going to a, a SaaS application that, that isn't sanctioned um, by the organization um, and, and get an idea of what's going on there. Um, we can also uh, then deliver a report on you know, Shadow IT um, with with a single click. Um, there's a, a Shadow IT button, and then, then it shows um, the applications that are being used, um, things like that. So here's an example. Um, using Salesforce, um, this is a sort of discovery scenario, right? So we can see um, who's logging in to uh, SFPC, um, you know, what kind of data is being shared. So right over here, we can see that um, <clears throat> that you know, there's there's Gmail accounts that are um, that are connected uh, to to other accounts. Um, so we can see who's logging in. Um, you know, and then we're also um, scanning the, the files that are uploaded. Here we can see um, that 10, 10 files have malware. That's, uh, that's what that really small writing there says. Um, and um, you know, one, uh, one, one, uh, and yeah, one, one user um, is, is probably suspicious, um, right? And so we can see all that information. Um, and see what's going on in Salesforce, um, uh, where you know, so that you can you know, um, you know what's going on there, right? If there are any, if there's any data leak that might be happening, um, if there's any compliance violations, if if some activity you know doesn't look right. Um, and so, you know, here, you know, what are, what are the remediation steps, right? We can. Um, you know, we're doing um, data analysis, and so we've identified that uh, it looks like there's a, a Visa credit card that was added um, in a file. Right? We're doing malware scans. Um, uh, the, the malware scan indicates that there isn't any, any threats. Um, you know, we've determined that this file is exposed uh, and why 
archive available. And so we can take action, modify the permissions on the file, to, uh, delete anonymous access to it. Um, and then additional, you know, user information, additional, yeah, in um, terms of, you know, user uh, location, time of upload, things like that. We, can, we know everything that's, that's going on with this particular file, and then, so we can, um, we, we can remediate that and, you know, make sure that no uh, PII is, is being um, leaked. Um, this is an example of, of the Shadow IT uh, with, using 40 CASB. Um, we've integrated the 48 logs, and so we're, that provides additional insights into um, the SaaS application traffic. Um, we can report on sanctioned versus unsanctioned um, usage, right? And so uploads containing a PII um, to unsanctioned storage app, you know, right? We can see that's happening um, here and what the file is. Um, we, you know, so we've identified that we can. We can identify that it's a personal um, account versus the sanctioned um, box account. Um, and so enforcement policies uh, can then be created um, on the FortiGate to remediate that risk. Uh, we do have compliance reporting, um, you know, HIPAA, PCI, SOX. Um, that's all built into FortiCASB, a single button, button click, um, and you can get those compliance reports. Um, and so, um, I'll, is there any questions um, on 40 CASB? Uh, if there are, uh, raise your hand. I guess we'll um, unmute you. Okay. Well, I have a question, um, uh, Garrick. Uh, my question is a really general one, which is so, what are the most common Issues that companies find when they when they adopt a CASB that they were surprised uh, about, or, or maybe or the or maybe even the what was the most common value that they get from it as well as the biggest surprise. I, I think it's it's really learning um, learning how much shadow IT is happening in an organization, right? How much, um, and then whether it's it's you know benign just just people. Um, uploading things to their uh, their personal um, their personal Gmail or or, or uh, Google Drive or you know people having tools that they like to use outside of what's sanctioned. Um, you know, it, organizations are always surprised at how how much that's going on, right? Um, you know, uh, you know, for we we I I use. Dropbox a lot for, for a lot of things, you know, even outside of, of, of work. And so um, it's very natural for me to um, want to upload files into Dropbox, um, you know, even if it's uh, even if it's 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 work related. Whereas you know we sort of as an organization of Fortinet are we're using you know uh, um, OneDrive, right? Actually, we're using a couple things, but you know OneDrive um, is a lot easier sort of use than Ignite. Um, you know, and so things like that happen, um, you know, it's happening a lot and, and organizations can be blind to it uh, without having um, something in place, uh, without having a CASB solution in place. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's kind of what I would expect. Uh, the other area that that I would expect people to get great value out of and maybe from my point of view, other than visibility, it seems like the biggest value is going to be in control. Right. You if you can control how customers or how your employees use these applications, these sanctioned applications out there that you're, that you're allowing your customers to use um, in terms of how they move the data, what they can access, uh, you know, can they copy it off those servers and that sort of thing. That is key to containing and controlling um, uh, your data. Otherwise, I don't know how you would do that because yeah. they don't necessarily provide these. These different vendors don't necessarily restrict you from taking that data and moving it off off the servers. Yeah, and, and another thing um, that's useful with 40 cas it's not, we don't see it a whole bunch, but the ability to see so sort of where accounts are logging in from, right? If, if you know, if you're based in, you know, let's say you're based in, in Southern California, right, and you have, you know, your user base is primarily 
in Southern California, maybe throughout the U.S. You see a user, you know, logging in from China um, to, you know, to, to get to your your Salesforce or, or you know some other SaaS application. So that's and that you know that's not normal behavior. Right? So that that's a red flag that that you know some of these um, you know, credentials got compromised. You know something's going on that that IT needs to um, to investigate, right? And then, and and then you can also track where that specific user, um, uh, you know, went or or went throughout the throughout the SaaS application. Yep. Okay, um, Lisa, you have raised your hand. Uh, I can't I, I can't unmute you. I think you have to unmute yourself if you can see your your ability your uh, microphone. If not, we'll move on. You can ask the question later. Tick, tick, tick. Okay. Um, you, you're self-muted, so <laughs> if you're muting yourself, I can't have, I can't help you. All right. Um, why don't you go ahead and Garrick and and uh, and we'll get to the other questions later. All right. Sounds good. Um, so now we'll um, you know, switch gears into for uh, PWP. That's our um, cloud workload protection, right? So that's focused mainly on um, infrastructure as a service. Um, you know, as I kind of mentioned earlier, um, there's a lot of uh, misconfiguration in the cloud, or you know, the setup's just wrong. Um, you know, 55 percent of um, attacks are unauthorized access. Um, you know, when you're working in the cloud, uh, there's a lot of we're using a lot of APIs for for cloud-based um, applications, um, web applications. They're kind of based on the cloud, um, and um, 49% of, of um, you know of the attacks are hijacked accounts um, or, or trapped in service. Right? So um, there's a lot of there's a lot of threats uh, that are coming into our infrastructure as a service um, environments. Um, one one example is uh, MageCart. Um, which is which is a problem with uh, e-commerce, right? They're uh, basically injecting a JavaScript um, into um, e-commerce sites so that uh, they they're pulling um, credit card numbers, um, and it's found that it has infected uh, seventeen thousand sites through misconfigured uh, Amazon S3 buckets um, with forty WCP, right? The anti Virus engine can detect um, the mage cart code pattern, um, and also use that engine to scan for JavaScript files. Um, uh, you know, to look for uh, attackers that are are um, laying in wait, and that's a, a sort of something popular where you, you know you don't you get in the environment, and you don't um, you don't you know get all malicious right away. You kind of sit there, I'll wait for a little while. Um, Maybe learn what's going. Maybe learn the environment better uh, before you you weaponize um, your um, you start your attack. Um, so you know, some of the challenges that are created by public cloud adoption. Um, again, there's that lack of vis visibility and control. Um, you know, traditionally we we've had um, you know, where we have data centers and like that. We have we have firewalls of security pieces in place. Um, where where we can control access and we can see what's going on uh, in in the cloud where right, we don't necessarily have have that anymore um, so, you know so we have a lot of users that are going into the cloud um, but very limited governance um, and so you know that um, <laughs> increases the likelihood of um, undetected uh, misconfigurations um, also it's hard to um, quantify that risk to leadership if we don't if we don't have that visibility into what's going on, um, we also, you know, inability. To, another challenge is inability to rapidly detect and respond to threats. Um, you know, in the cloud, generally there's a, a lot of data, um, and so that makes it very hard um, to to see, um, you know, where there might be a problem. Um, we also um, there's a lack of um, cloud context and, and data correlation. Yeah, so um, this leads to delays in investigating threats because we don't have context as to um, where the threats are coming from and what's going on. 
Um, it's also another the final challenge here really is just the cloud is complicated um, to to manage and to get uh, compliance for. Um, you know, there's all kinds of new cloud services that are open, being added regularly. Um, it's hard to prove that compliance to auditors, um, and so you know that's just um, that's increasing the cost of of being compliant. It's also delaying of the migration to the cloud. So, um, 40 WCP sort of helps with that, right? We can um, we we provide that visibility into what's going on, uh, making sure we also help with uh, making sure that um, that things are con configured properly, or at least provide best practices so that we so that the configuration changes can happen, um, and that helps just with being uh, that helps with being compliant, being able to being able to show these things to the auditors. Um, for your WCP is GUI, um, it's you know it's web based. Um, you have we have controls for each of the different um, infrastructures, uh, infrastructure service applications that are um, that are in the that are in that um, you know in that public cloud. Um, the dashboard makes it easy to identify your risks, and we have some advanced. Um, reporting metrics um, and it's it's simple uh, you know we can get it up um, in minutes it's, it's really you know like for CASB using APIs to communicate with with the different public clouds that, that we support um, all right so to, to help manage uh, security risks and also to help achieve compliance but you gain that visibility um, in Titan control into your um, Infrastructure as a service, as well as the public cloud data, um, the usage and the resources uh, that they are using in the public cloud, um, and then you can also confidently and securely deploy your applications and services um, in those public cloud environments. Um, um, <clears throat> yeah, so I'll talk about a little, um, some of these things a little bit. But um, you know, what are we? We uh, so we're doing that risk management. Um, you know, securing data, providing threat detection and response, uh, compliance, so traffic analysis and, and investigation. Um, you know, so to give you that visibility, the ability to um, automate uh, your um, automate your, your your remediation. You can automate the alerting, and then also um, sort of autom automate I mean, how we deal with those threats. Um, and then also gives you the ability to do compliance uh, discovery um, and also report. Um, so this is just sort of the, the infrastructure for visibility and control, right? Um, we're just we're basically you have um, you know, a couple public cloud networks here. Um, we're leveraging the public cloud management API, um, and and then that. And it tells 40 WCP what's going on um, in the public cloud, um, so that gives us the ability to enable, um, you know, reporting on, on compliance violations. Um, it, it enhances these, the ability to give us um, for compliance uh, with the guidelines, you know, and on security best practices, um, and offers you know, threat and risk management tools to help trace misconfigurations to the source. Um, and so you have a system. Compliance or reporting across multiple clouds, um, you know, a dynamic cloud heat map and threat map, and then also streamlined investigation. Um, so it, it integrates with um, the Fortinet security fabric. I can have all of this, um, all of um, this data um, be sent to you know Forty Analyzer, um, so that you can do um, reporting on that, additional reporting on that, um, and we're you know using. We're integrated with the um, you know, the big public cloud services um, and you know, using their APIs. Um, here's you know an example of risk, risk management. It, um, we had a company building um, and operating an application in the public cloud. Um, it was introducing a new threat vector, um, you know, the cloud management um, interface and the API. Um, Aren't really like you know static on-premise um, environments, 
right? Because the APIs change regularly um, or can change regularly. Or can, you, know, you can add new new APIs, um, and so that kind of makes it difficult to to manage, um, difficult to to figure out the compliance, right? So um, the solution was to use 4DWCP um, to continuously continuously do configuration assessment and risk analysis, and then um, present that um, information to the security team so they could focus on you know, high, high priority issues. Um, you know, so we were able to you know, provide you know, their uh, security um, for their Amazon um, storage, the EC2, the EKS, and the uh, IAM uh, roles. And so, you know, by proactively reducing um, the risk um, with the central visibility control, um, you know, they were able to add, they were able to, you know, secure their web application, um, you know, um, and also um, prioritize the vulnerabilities based on, on the risk score. Um, so, you know, a couple of unique selling points, um, you know, it provides out of the box uh, predefined configuration assessment policies. Um, you know, and then you can also customize scripting uh, policy controls via Python um, for advanced usage. Um, there's also a lot of different ways that we can um, <clears throat> drill down to the profile details to understand um, the life cycle um, of instances and also track configuration changes. You know, the region and the resources um, that are being used. Uh, data security, you know, customers' challenge was they didn't have the tools and the visibility to identify misconfiguration, misconfigured data storage, data leakage, malicious files on their cloud storage. Their cloud storage. And so, uh, 4 WCP you know, was able to analyze their configurations, um, their files or documents in the cloud storage, identify um, and monitor and secure configurations, um, sensitive data, and also malware. Um, you know, we could drill down into uh, document profiles to generate alerts for customers. Uh, and you know, generate alerts, and then uh, the customer can monitor sensitive data activity and also analyze data in order to investigate data leakage in their environment. Um, right, by being able to, um, you know, benefits here were that we were able to identify that sensitive data, um, assess the data leakage, and, and also discover the misconfiguration across our cloud environment. Um, also, we could you know, assess the risk by Again, really drilling down into document profiles um, and then an alert whoever needed to be alerted if there were misconfigurations, data leakage, things like that. Um, and so, um, you know, for WCP, uh, it integrates with 40 net, our 40 guard labs team, right? And so, we have the ability to, um, you know, use 40 guard antivirus and also our zero day exploit databases to detect malware. It also um, gives us deep visibility into data storage. Um, to analyze different file types. Um, and then, you know, with, for threat detection and response, that's the, the challenge here is migrating an application to some sort of a public cloud um, infrastructure as a service, right? When you do that, you're increasing the risk of security threats, um, and the organization doesn't necessarily have um, an easy way to detect and respond to these threats fast enough. Um, in in a hybrid or, or multi cloud environment, um, so you know, 40 WCP is going to continuously monitor um, and track all security components. Um, you know, that's configurations, user activity, traffic flow, you know, log, data storage. Um, out of the box, we have predefined policies to detect potential risks like malicious traffic, suspicious user activity, uh, vulnerable configurations, um, and also sensitive uh, data leaks or malware. And so the solution um, provides the necessary context to respond to individual threats quickly uh, when, the dis when the incident occurs through integration with a cloud service, um, you know, like AWS, uh, SQS, and SNS workflows, um, and then we enhance that with the DevOps automation. So the benefits that CWP um, provides is the detects complex threats in public cloud environments, 
Uh, we can identify suspicious hosts and IPs and provide details on the policies they're vi violating and also rapidly respond to identify threats um, and provide contextual alerts. Um, so again, it's just that integration with the 40 Guard Labs um, that gives us the ability to, to do this quickly, right? Um, I don't know if you guys know about 40 Guard Labs. It's a team of um, threat researchers up in um, Vancouver, about 250 or so. They spend all day every day um, looking for bad things on the internet um, and then finding ways to protect um, the full Fortinet ecosystem from, from those things. Um, and then compliance. Many you know, everybody needs to be compliant for you know, most organizations. Um, need to be compliant with, you know, PCI, HIPAA, SOX, uh, GDPR, um, you know, and whatever else. In California, we now have, since the beginning of the year, we, we have, uh, <clears throat> you know, our GDPR, a GD, yeah, GDPR like um, regulations that need to be uh, you know, followed. Um, and so, you know, 4WCP gives you the ability. Um, out of the box um, to be compliant with, with different standards. Um, we quickly generate compliance reports uh, for auditing teams um, so that you know you can also you know, like quickly identify where policy violations are taking place and to um, remediate those uh, the violations. All right. So um, I think you know the benefits are um, are that we can you know, enhance visibility and control um, so we can maintain historical historical snapshots of the cloud environment. We're also continuously monitoring um, security compliance requirements uh, through the, through different uh, security and compliance assistance policies. Um, and also, uh, the comprehensive compliance reporting helps um, organizations to stay compliant and also reduce risk. Um, so you know, just it's a comprehensive compliance reporting uh, for um, you know, uh, IS uh, infrastructure as a service infrastructures um, across uh, you know the major public cloud. Um, and so yeah, these are just some of those um, screenshots of that. Um, and we can also do um, traffic analysis and investigation. Right? You know, because this is in the cloud, um, the traditional network monitoring technologies really don't give you the ability to um, don't really give you that the insight that you need um, into these environments. Um, 40 WCCT uh, gives organizations the ability to have that visibility into um, you know, all the network resources, topologies, you know, identify and monitor network traffic for attacks, and also drill down um, with uh, capabilities into um, instance profiles. So you have that contextual understanding of the cloud environment, and that's, so that helps. Reduce incident response times, um, and also gives you the ability to um, analyze an incident's impact, uh, so you can improve your security posture. Um, and so, you know, for WCP's benefit here is that it gives you a solution that, uh, that aligns with modern cloud um, architectures and enables organizations to have complete visibility um, and visualize their uh, infrastructure as a service environment. Um, so that they can quickly implement effective controls and security policies and also protect the resources against inside and outside malicious activity. Um, yeah. and so, um, you know, we, again, Red 40 Guard is helping to detect um, sort of with the 40 Guard IOC, you know, we can detect uh, in indicators of compromise. Um, and so if you know, something doesn't look right, we can, we can alert. Also, the anti-botnet database can also help to detect um, compromised instances and malicious traffic also um, and provide a network topology and a traffic graph to help analyze traffic over time and quickly analyze traffic flow logs um, in and out of the instance um, as a time range so you can see if there's something doesn't look right. Um, right so we've talked about this kind of a lot but you know, the use cases are for WCP risk management, risk detection, data security, and traffic analysis. Um, that's really just going to help um, you know, mitigate risks from unknown configurations, uh, detect threats um, from suspicious activity in your cloud accounts, uh, maintain control over files stored in the cloud, and also analyze traffic um, in fenced and unfenced virtual networks. Um, 
And so, you know, there's two for, uh, um, you know, for 40 CASB, uh, 40 WC, uh, WC, CWP, um, two different licensing models. Um, so, you know, 40 CASB is, you know, for uh, um, software as a service for SaaS applications. Um, so it's sort of user based. Um, it starts at 100 users. Um, you can stack that to get to wherever you need to be. Um, and then for your WCP, there's um, Workload Guardian, which is protecting um, your your host, your your instances. Um, that's based on the number of, of instances that you have. And then we have Storage Guardian, um, both basic and advanced. Um, and that's for your your data malware detection. Also, um, you know, advanced adds uh, DLP protection in there. Um, and that supports um, AWS, GCP, and Azure. Um, yeah, anyway, it, it scales. Um, they both scale um, to whatever you need. Um, they integrate with the Fortinet security fabric. Um, it's 100% API based, so it doesn't matter where your users are. Um, and then we also have a fairly low TCO. And um, we'll talk about it. Um, just, yeah, just a summary. Really, you know, you can manage the data in, in both, um, you know, cloud, ser uh, cloud services, also your cloud infrastructure. We can prevent threats to your network, you know, do risk management, uh, threat investigation analysis becomes easier, and also a compliance and data, se data security, um, you know, become a lot easier also. That is. All right, Garrett. And that's it. Hey, uh, I had a question for you, Garrick, uh, before we open yep. it up. Um, uh, so what options do uh, customers have for evaluating these products prior to making a purchase? Is there such a thing? Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we can work with the local sales team and, and set up um, and, and, and get, get trial licenses for, uh, for both, of, both these products. And we can also, you know, um, um, you know, the local sales, most of the local sales teams you know, have the ability to um, to kind of show both products um, also. So, yeah, we can do options there. Okay. Um, so if if anybody has any questions, um, I've, I've enabled as much as I can to unmute you. You can type something into the questions box or you can <clears throat> raise your hand and, and um, we can get you to ask a question through your microphone. I'm also kind of curious about my, my similar question on public cloud, uh, uh, your uh, CWP uh, offering. Uh, what what do people, what do companies typically find after they implement something like this? Is there is there sort of, are there some set of things that are very surprising or, or, or great, you know, maybe the greatest value that they get out of this that that they maybe didn't even think that they would. Yeah, I think that it's there's you know just just the amount of um, you know sort of misconfigured um, mis misconfiguration that, that exists um, in their environment, right? You know, a lot of you know a lot of times um, the cloud is set up uh, because it's it's easy. Um, you know, and so you know, you have you know um, DevOps people, um, you know uh, developers, whatever it is, you know setting up cloud environments, um, and then but they're not thinking about security, right? They're thinking about it, you know I I can get this spun up quickly and easily, and then you know we have something that, that's out there um, that we can you know test that we can you know um, provide as as a, as a service, whatever it is, um, and they didn't take the time to to properly configure um, the, the the pieces of the of the instance um, to be secure, right? And they figure, oh, this is the cloud. That's that's Amazon's problem. That's uh, Microsoft's problem. That's you know, Google's problem. No, you know, um, you know the part that the you know the network part that's their problem, but the application part that's your problem, right? It's sort of what some what you were mentioning, which you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's 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 not the the cloud provider's problem to secure your application. That's that's the organization's problem. Yeah, um, that makes sense to me. Um, 
uh, so uh, I don't see any other questions from anybody. Um, if uh, any last minute option, uh, questions, go ahead and type them in. Otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll let everybody go. Thank everybody for coming today. Uh, we will follow up with you to see if there's a way we can uh, help you understand uh, how this, these solutions might help you um, and how we could get to the point where this you decide this is something that may be great, great value. We also can help you in the area of home securing your home employees, which obviously everybody's been dealing with that as well. So there's a number of areas that related to the cloud that you know we want to jump in and help you with. So thank you very much for attending today and I hope you all have a great, uh, great week. Thanks.